The SR-91 Aurora is supposedly the spy plane that was never built, but with a plane that was supposedly never built, why is there so much talk about the SR-91? Was it actually created or was it something else? Was it a secret black program for the B-2 bomber, the XB-70 supersonic bomber, or something else that we'll get into in a little bit. By the end of this video, we're gonna be able to intelligently understand potentially what this SR-91 was. We're gonna dive into the claims and the sightings and what people actually saw when they claimed to see the SR-91. But first we gotta talk about what the SR-91 is claimed to be. It is essentially claimed to be a supersonic reconnaissance plane with the potential for it to drop weapons as well. Some have said that it's the precursor to the SR-71. Some have said it's an SR-72 would be the precursor, but some are saying that it's this SR-91, which is more likely. If you look at the SR-91, it's essentially a collaboration, like let's just say a love child between the B-2 bomber and the SR-71. Now the fact that these two aircraft were heavily relied upon by the US, the SR-71 in the past, the B-2 currently, as of the time of this video, it's not that far out there to think that there is a Frankenstein version of an aircraft that bears the strengths of the SR-71 and the B-2. I mean, why not? If you have two very successful airframes, why not combine the two of those into one package? Act now and we'll give you two for only a hundred billion dollars. But the big thing with the SR-91 are the claims. The fact that this thing was built to go up to Mach 5 will have made it or would have made it the US's first strategic hypersonic aircraft that was built to go in deep into enemy territory, potentially release even faster weapons, or just drop its bombs and get out of there, which is why this thing rocked so many boats. This is why the waves of this thing get everybody a little bit antsy, because a hypersonic bomber is something that the world has not seen yet, and that would be a total game changer. Former Lockheed Martin Skunk Works director Ben Rich commented that the Aurora being an actual aircraft was actually a mistake. It was actually put in a budget that was reviewed by Congress and it was listed as the Aurora Aircraft Program. But Ben Rich goes on to say in a statement that this was actually just funding for the B-2 prior to the B-2 being released. And there's other conversations from colonels, generals, higher ups in the military who have essentially said the big misunderstanding is just because of the fact that a lot of these aircraft that are hidden inside of black programs can't be named or they even haven't been named yet. So the fact that it was called the Aurora was just a placeholder for the B-2 program. And a colonel who's high up in Skunk Works also commented that the media is probably not gonna believe them, but the Aurora isn't mentioned as far as an SR-91 because it never existed. But of course that's what you would say if you're creating a black program. And that's what you would have to say. So the fact that the SR-91 is rumored to be the Aurora is up for debate. I think potentially this was in fact the B-2 funding, but it's up for you to decide. There's a lot of black programs out there and obviously those can't be released or talked about and there needs to be a cover story for them. So B-2 or Aurora, that's up for you to decide. So let's just say that the SR-91 never really existed in a line of aircraft that were produced consistently, that rolled off an assembly line and provided strategic air power across the globe. Let's say that never actually happened. But what if there was a design mock-up that was functional and flyable that took flight many times to test the concept of an SR-91? Now to me, that's a little bit more of a probability. In the 1990s, there were a series of corroborated sightings of the SR-91. It was in the Los Angeles area. Now that's important because Everyone in LA has a great imagination. No, it's not just that. It's the fact that Groom Lake Area 51 is very close to California. So if this aircraft was as fast as people said it was, then there's a chance that there's gonna be rumblings coming from such a massive aircraft, such a fast aircraft that could potentially reach population centers with LA being the closest, biggest population center to some of the testing areas that this SR-91 would have potentially flown in. So that does give a little bit of credibility to the fact that this thing could have been seen and heard. 
There was also a famous 1989 sighting over the North Sea where multiple witnesses said they saw a Dorito-shaped aircraft that was dark in color and that was actually refueling from a KC-135. They claimed that they were fighters on the wings of which they said were F-111s, but they claimed that this was a Dorito-shaped object that was the SR-91. Potentially though, this could have been early testing of the B-2 bomber that was just mistaken for an aircraft that may have looked like it had supersonic capabilities. Maybe it was the angle, made it look a little bit more like the concepts we've seen of the SR-91, but in fact could have just been the B-2 bomber. And the U.S. definitely denies that a plane like this was ever built. And when you look back into that 1985 congressional budget, the amount of money that was allocated to this black program for the Aurora was somewhere around $485 million. So even adjusted for inflation, most likely, this was just a program to build some sort of a mock-up or concept aircraft since building multiple of these aircraft with that small amount of money just isn't gonna be feasible, but it could also have been to adapt and update concepts that were already being created for the B-2 and kind of pushing the B-2 along through multiple years of black programs to get it up to a point where it was really ready to go out and complete the mission that the B-2 was built for. But even so, by the late 80s and early 90s, lots of aerospace enthusiasts believed that creating an SR-91 was completely possible. And I agree, I think they would have been right. It just depends on how much resources would have needed to be allocated to actually create a fleet of these SR-91s. So as you can imagine, there were lots of different claims of sightings besides the ones we've already talked about, but who knows, those could be added on to far-fetched claims of extraterrestrials and other things that, trust me, I want aliens to be true as well, but like Elon Musk has even said, they sure are subtle. So in this case as well, I think if there's SR-91s out there just flying around on the daily, they sure are subtle. So what else could these have been? Well, there's been lots of reports of the Black Triangle UFO. Those have come from England, they've come from the United States. But again, when you look at the shape of the Black Triangle UFO, about the time it was being spotted in the late 80s, early 90s, you're looking at something that coincides with B2 development and possible B2 testing. And then there's a chance that it could have been the Black Star. The Black Star is a code name for a space plane built by the United States that had two stages. It was a supersonic aircraft that would then get another space vehicle up to about 100,000 feet, and then it would launch that space vehicle into orbit. So there's the potential that some of these sightings were just the concepts of that as well. And then there's the XB-70 Valkyrie. So if you look at this aircraft, it's a very fast supersonic concept for a bomber. These designs and these concepts were actually created into prototypes that actually flew. So potentially some of the sightings were just adaptations of this XB-70 that was trying to be a little bit more stealthy and may represent some of the artist renderings of the SR-91 that we see today. But the XB-70 was retired supposedly in 1969, but who knows, maybe some of these were kept on to continue the design evolution of the SR-91, of the SR-72, and other aircraft that would take on some of the aspects of the B-2. So there's lots Lots of different options here. There's lots of different prototypes and aircraft that could have been flying and could have been responsible for some of these sightings. Now, I want this SR-91 to be true, but in my humble opinion, it's a concept. It's a very cool concept at that. Now, will this be designed and released in the future? I think there's a very strong chance that something like this could be designed, marketed, and built in the future. My money would be on the fact of this being a drone and not actually having a pilot in the cockpit or maybe having dual purpose aircraft that could be manned or unmanned. And now, as you can see with the B-21 coming online, there's just lots more options that the Air Force is focusing on rather than potentially building something so fast. Maybe it's gonna be something more along the lines of the B-21, just a little more advanced. So at the end of the day, what a super cool concept. Is it flying? Potentially not, 
but keep your eyes skyward, who knows, maybe one of these days you'll get the next sighting of the SR91. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please click another video that'll pop up over here, that would mean a lot to me. I also have a podcast that we'll be releasing soon. It's not necessarily all aviation, but it has aspects of elite human performance, doing hard things, and then just discovering more about the world. And I know all of you out there are trying to do that, just like I am. I'll link to that in the description. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.